test it. You know, we are physicists. We test everything. Ready, set. The Xeno Dark Matter project was born here in Nevis Labs with the first prototype Xenon 10 in 2002 and the collaboration started with a few groups mostly in the US and which has grown to include today more than 100 people distributed around the US and Europe and Israel. Xenon is one of the experiments which are looking for a dark matter and what is this dark matter we know and we know it quite precisely and since a long time that we live in a universe of which 95% is unknown to us. The first steps of the project were taken in USA at Nevis Lab, a research facility operated by Columbia University. It was here where Elena April and her team first started working on the idea of using xenon to detect dark matter. Dark matter and dark energy are two of the most outstanding questions in physics today that we aim at, at uh, resolving. And xenon is one of the many experiments which are uh, after the question of dark matter, what it is and how we find it. We know dark matter exists. We have evidence for it at all times from three minutes after the Big Bang to today. We have evidence for it at all scales from the universe as a whole to just our Milky Way. The question is not, does dark matter exist? The question is, what is dark matter made out of? We try to answer exactly that question with the Xenon project. We do that here in Italy in the Gran Sasso mountain range. There's a laboratory behind me, the Laboratorio Nazionale del Gran Sasso, which offers us one of the prime locations in the world to do this kind of research. The Xenon one-ton experiment is located in Hall B of the underground laboratory. We are searching for events that are very rare, dark matter events. So we have to filter out all those events that happen very often. Those events come from cosmic radiation. To filter out cosmic radiation, we hide our experiment behind a kilometer of rock. experiment like others in the field is based on the hypothesis that the dark matter particle will although rarely interact with standard matter and we are looking for the signature of these interactions which are very rare with detectors which are very very quiet very low noise detector placed very deep let's say underground or under under a deep mine dark matter is one of the most exciting unsolved problems in physics we know from indirect evidences that the universe is composed mostly of other forms of matter than we know. What we know with the atoms that we have here and all the molecules that we know and everything we have seen with telescopes makes about 4 to 5 percent of the whole universe. And we know indirectly there must be much more out there in a form which we have never seen before. So the properties of this dark matter particle, among other things, is that it interacts only very weakly with normal matter, with the matter that we know exists. And because of that, it's very hard to detect. So with about 100 kilograms of liquid xenon, we just cannot find the dark matter. We don't have enough what we call target material because of this interaction cross-section, as we call it in physics, is very low. We are building the next phase of the project, the xenon one ton that will have more than three tons of liquid xenon in total, and then we define, based on the position of each interaction our detector, we define an inner central region of about one or maybe more tons of, of liquid xenon that we use for the actual dark matter search. So the search um, goes as follows. We look for collisions between the dark matter particles and xenon nuclei, 
and uh, there is some light, some light in the UV region that is being produced, some free charge, and we are trying to detect these very, very small signals. Construction began in July 2013. will detect muons, cosmic muons, coming from outside, penetrating the rock. So normally they are also even mm, high energy muons. And um, going through the water, they will produce some light and the light will be detected uh, from the photomultipliers. That allows us to, um, to say, hey, a muon was there, and uh, if we have at the same time a signal in the TPC, in the time projection chamber, we know that unfortunately it is not uh, the dark matter, but simply the, 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 the um, production of some uh, signal from these muons. Here on my computer we can see a picture of the full experiments with the service buildings where we have on the, on the last floor the cryogenic system that is a source of cold. In the middle floor we will have the DRQ of the experiments, so all the electronics capable to record uh, the events, and on the last floor is the so-called restox, that is a container of liquid xenon when we are not using the xenon for the experiments. And close by, on the side of the buildings, we will see the, the water tank, and into the water tank we see installed the cryostat, that is supported by a so-called stand, that is something a bit more complicated than only a stand, because it's also capable to make the cryostat horizontal with a precision of 0.1 millimeter. My uh, institute or my group is responsible for um, essentially two things. One is a mechanical engineering uh, part. We're involved with, um, we're actually designing and building the support structure for the cryostat of Xenon 1 ton, um, which is uh, supposed to hold the cryostat in the middle of this big water tank. And uh, the cryostat itself is quite heavy, sort of four or five tons in weight. But the liquid level inside has to be controlled to a very uh, fine degree, to better than 100 micron, uh, micrometers. So that's uh, sort of a challenging from a technical standpoint. We are inside the steel tank of the Xeno one ton experiment, which will be filled with uh, a lot of ultra high pure water to shield the Xeno one ton detector, which will be filled itself with 3.2 tons of liquid xenon. What you see is a very uh, simple pipe or naked pipe, but it's actually quite complicated. This is a vacuum, it's a 400 millimeter diameter tube, which is vacuum insulated with the super insulation with a lot of mylar wrapped inside the inner pipe. And so you can imagine, you will see that inside this 400 millimeter pipe, we have a 250 millimeter tube, all stainless steel, electro-polished, uh, extremely clean, which is actually carrying both uh, uh, inside a separate pipe of 100 millimeter, more than seven kilometers of cables, which will carry the signals and the high voltage from the detector to the outside wall to the electronics. Uh, readout for the experiment, but also the bloodline, which for me is really the liquefied xenon that we will produce in the cryogenic rooms on the top floor of our building. The use of the cryogenic system in an experiment like the xenon one ton experiment is to maintain the liquid xenon target at a stable and precise temperature. And this we do with pulse tube refrigerators in our case. The other use of the cryogenic system is also with the heat exchangers to allow the fast and efficient circulation of the xenon from the detector volume to the purification system and back. The pulse tube refrigerators are, as the name says, are refrigerators and uh, they are used to extract the heat from the xenon gas, condense it and return it as liquid into the cryostat. So the heat that comes from outside will uh, transfer uh, a bit of heat to the xenon and then make it boil and this produces gas and then the, cold, the PTR are recondensing this gas and the gas goes back as liquid uh, and after it's condensed it's liquid and goes back to the detector 
So the goal of the cryogenic system, like I said, is to maintain the target at a fixed temperature, the liquid xenon target at a fixed temperature. And it does this by continuously recondensing gas that evaporates from the cryostat. A system like this, the features that you would like to have, like I said, is precise temperature control because we want to maintain the, the xenon at a fixed temperature. We don't want it to vary in time. The other thing that we want is stable and continuous operation for long periods. Okay? So that means the equipment that we use has to be resilient and it has to uh, withstand sometimes uh, unforeseen power failures or unforeseen equipment failures. And uh, we want to maintain the detector with the liquid inside it for very long periods of time to take the data, let's say, over three years. So the system has to also have this, this uh, resilience to, uh, to potential equipment failures or, uh, and stability. The time projection chamber installed in the cryostat is the heart of the Xenon 1 ton detector. TPC is the central part also means it's closest to the dark matter target. That means it has to be very radio pure. So we made a big effort to select very clean materials for the TPC. And what you see here is basically only copper and Teflon. Copper is electroformed. It's one of the cleanest materials that you can get, simply because individual atoms build up the new metal. This is oxygen-free, high-conductivity copper. Very clean material, and we selected it specifically for our purpose. So we measured the intrinsic radioactivity of each component. And the same with the Teflon. Teflon is an insulator because we will apply minus 100 kilovolt on the bottom here, maybe also only minus 50, it does not really matter, but that's the ballpark that we speak of. We will have ground up here, there's one meter in between, so there's a big electric field. So the copper rings will be on high voltage, the Teflon structure as an insulator in between will separate the pieces on high voltage to make sure that there is no yeah, shortcut. The Teflon serves a second purpose, it's not only a good insulator, it's also a very good reflective for xenon ultraviolet scintillation light. The TPC is the central part, so there are many institutions involved in the TPC. It could even be okay to use one of the other ones. Xenon One Ton is the collaboration between 21 institutions from all over the world. Xenon is not actually the only target that we could use in this detector. Uh, there are other choices possible, always using noble, noble elements. So, for example, there are other experiments, uh, also here, Gran Sasso, for instance, the dark side program, they use uh, argon, liquid argon. Um, but in our view, xenon is, uh, is the best choice because uh, it is a, a very dense material, then it's about three times the density of water. Um, and uh, Dark matter, the dark matter particles, as we think they, they interact with the ordinary matter, they uh, need mass, they need density. So the, the denser the material, the better. Um, then uh, the nucleus of the xeno is quite large because the atomic mass is about 130, which means that uh, the target for, for the interaction of dark matter particles is, is bigger. And uh, also the scintillation light, which is the signal that we collect in the detector to, to, to look for, for dark matter, is, uh, quite, uh, is quite strong and also easily detectable with standard photomultipliers. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think if you go look at where Xenon 10 was, I mean, it's sort of almost in the corner of a cupboard. Um, and clearly, as you get to be bigger experiments, you need more people to come in and, and build, the, build and operate the experiment. So uh, the, the big collaboration, it's also good that these are global collaborations now. M many of these projects are now getting to the point where they need not one country, but maybe lots of different countries, and they, they all bring different expertise to the project. So uh, I think that's good for the students also to meet uh, people from other international communities. That's always part of training a, uh, the next workforce, the uh, next generation workforce. <laughs>
each factor of 10 you get more sensitive, you hope that you're going to see a dark matter signal. Now, whether that happens or not, well, we don't know what nature is, but that's why we're looking. But uh, yeah, the, the, the progress from one experiment to the next one to the next one, and you know, this one will be the most sensitive experiment now for you know, three, four years. And so it's got a lot of work to do, and uh, hopefully we'll get some very good results from it.